Yo, what is going on you guys? My name is Owen and welcome back to another video. Hope you guys are all doing well and having a great day so far. Today's video is gonna be another pickups video since I know you guys love some pickups. Now that we're deep into fall, I'm getting some more layering items, which is a lot of fun. Um, fall is definitely my favorite season when it comes to being able to like, put together outfits. It gives you probably the most uh, variation, the most options available. Today I have a combination of some vintage items and some designer items to show you guys. Before we get into the pickups, I want to do one quick announcement for my brand Somar. If you guys have been following my brand, you might know that the next drop are the G73 tassel trousers. And I can officially say that the release date of those trousers is October 28th at 12 p.m. PST, which is Halloween weekend. Um, it's the Friday before Halloween. Um, so it's gonna be next week, depending on when this video drops. I think it'll be next week. Probably the most anticipated release for Somar that I've done in a while, which is really exciting. Um, and yeah, those will be ready to drop. They'll be priced at $180, and there'll be a lot more info on the brand's Instagram page and on the website. So feel free to check that out at your whim. And yeah, I say we hop right into the pickups. First up for the pickups, we have a pair of shoes, and these were sent to me by my good friend, Ray Mia, fellow YouTuber. Um, he's got his own brand, which is Ore, and Ore is very well known for their footwear. Um, he's done quite a few footwear releases so far. He's done some boots, he's done some derbies, lots in the works. Um, easily one of my favorite brands out there. And this box, Honestly, randomly showed up at my door and I was not expecting it at all. And yeah, I was pleasantly surprised. So here are the shoes. These are the Ore Infantry Derbies. And I believe this is calfskin according to the box. It's done in like a smooth patent leather. And this is a really great switch up from what he's done in the past. Um, some of the other shoes that he's done have been like a pebbled leather and I'm a huge fan of this patent leather. Um, I've actually been after a pair of derbies for a minute, so I am very glad these came in. Um, they do have a nice chunky lug sole right there. This is the Vibram, I believe it's the Montagna sole. Um, they have these nice rope laces with the metal aglets. The combination hardware between like the hiking style shoes and the traditional eyelets that you find on a lot of boots. These do have a double capped toe, which I'm a huge fan of. And I also love the blacked out stitching. It does have the Ore stamp right there on, I guess it's the heel. And on the back for ease of access, it does have a nice chunky zipper, which makes it really easy to get onto. You actually don't need to unlace the shoes. It's got the Ore insole right there. They're extremely comfy. Um, I've gotten a decent amount of wear in them so far and I'm excited to keep wearing them. Um, it's sort of like the perfect derby for me at the moment. So thank you so much, Ray, for sending these over. Um, really appreciate it, man. Love what you're doing with the brand, so keep it up. So next up is an item category that I actually don't have too many of, and that is sweaters. And I recently picked up this sweater from Our Legacy. Um, I actually don't know what season this is from. This is not from any recent season from Our Legacy, but this is the mohair and boucle um, cropped, like chunky knit sweater. I honestly don't know the name of it. Um, very, like hard pressed to find any sort of information about this piece. Um, but yeah, it's an extremely, extremely soft knit with this beautiful level of texture. This is easily my favorite sweater that I have in my collection, even though I don't have very many. Um, but yeah, obviously had to go with a black sweater. Our Legacy is one of those brands I've always had my eye on but don't purchase from too often. I do have a couple Our Legacy items, but generally I just observe from a distance. Um, but this one, which I got in the secondhand market, had to have, I thought it was like the perfect sweater for me. So yeah, let's move on to the next item. To kind of preface the next two items, a lot of you guys might know that I'm a big gamer. I've um, been playing games my entire life. And I was recently replaying Resident Evil 5, which is, I think, probably tied for my favorite Resident Evil. And in that game, there's the Smith & Wesson, I think it's the M500 Magnum. Um, and 
I, d I don't know how, but it like sparked this deep dive of me trying to track down a couple of uh, Smith & Wesson hoodies. And so I ended up grabbing two, um, let's see if we can get them into frame, there we go. Two varying Smith & Wesson hoodies. Um, so just to go over one at a time, this one just like a gray heather hoodie, it's on their own blanks, which I think is kind of cool. Um, and I don't know exactly how old it is, but just based off the um, print cracking and like the tag and everything, I'm gonna guess it's from like the mid 90s ish. On this one, it's got the screen printed Smith and Wesson logo right there, with the little script and the tiny little logo. And then on the back side, the big, big symbol. Um, this one's very cracked, which I think looks great. Um, and yeah, kind of random. And then this other one, um, is on a black hoodie. It's a different blank, but it's also their own um, blank as well, which is kind of cool. Um, this one just has the giant embroidered Smith & Wesson logo, whereas the other one is screen printed. Nothing on the back. Um, they both fit me really nice. Uh, I just wanted like some cheap, weird hoodies, and these are very cheap and very weird, so decided to grab those. More of like a sentimental cop than anything else. Um, not really fashion forward, but I think they're pretty cool. This next item is something that I've been trying to track down for years now. Um, ever since I saw my friend Sanjeev in LA wearing the OG pair of these, I've always wanted one. I think it's like one of the coolest items out there. Um, it's from my favorite designer as well, which is Raph Simmons. You guys know I'm big on Raph Simmons right now. Um, and it is the Consumed Bondage Cargo Pants. And I finally ended up grabbing a pair from the Redux collection that dropped a couple of years ago. I ended up grabbing these off of one of the Japanese auction sites for a really good price, which I am beyond stoked with. And yeah, these have kind of been my everyday pair of pants for the past uh, like week and a half, two weeks maybe. Um, I got a size, I think it's a size 46. Um, and to be honest, the quality is not great. Um, Raft at least skimped on the quality for the Redux collection at least. I've never held the OG pair in hand, but honestly the hardware is not great, the material is not great. It's more of just the fit and the uniqueness of the item that's really doing it for me. Um, th this concept is something that we're considering doing um, on a future pair of Somar pants, but with like a huge twist on it. Um, so keep your eyes out for that. Yeah, you can see how much I've worn these based off of the heel bite. That's one leg and that is the other. So yeah, I've been wearing these a ton. Um, they're extremely baggy, very loose pants. A lot of people don't know this about these. This entire harness system actually snaps off. Every time you see the straps reach the top of the waistband, that's actually where there is a snap and these snaps can come all the way off and they just become a regular pair of uh, suit trousers. And yeah, the straps do run around the leg. It's almost in like a tube shape, um, kind of like a cage. And yeah, it's got these cargo pockets all over. Different styles, so on the back side, you only have one cargo pocket, which is just like a flap pocket with these little ropes. And then on the front, you have two larger cargo pockets. Um, still asymmetrical though, this one's a little bit bigger uh, and it has a zipper at the top and that has a snap pocket right there. And the other side just has a much smaller pocket, really similar, but a zipper on the front and then two little pockets. And yeah, I will say I'm a little disappointed by the quality. I did hear that the quality of the Redux stuff was not nearly as good as the OG. And unfortunately, that is true. <laughs> So I don't recommend paying the resale price for these, but I know they are rare and I know they're very sought after. I will say, if you like the idea of this and you want something that's much better quality, just wait for Somar to drop in eventually. Um, so yeah, I will keep you guys updated on that process. To continue the Raph Simmons theme, I actually have another Grail pickup from Raph Simmons. And when I say Grail pickup, I mean like all time Grail piece from Raph Simmons from the same collection, but not the Redux is from Spring Summer 2003, the Consumed Collection. This is the Vintage Cotton Rider Jacket. Um, this is a silhouette that Raph has done many times throughout many collections. Even in his sub-label, Raph by Raph Simmons, he's released a version of this. Um, but they're all slightly different. They all have like, their own little twist. 
and the consumed one is easily my favorite out of all of them. I actually looked the other week. I've been on the hunt for this for like three years pretty much. To go over some of the details really quick, um, it's got the traditional rider jacket, motorcycle jacket um, shape to it with the asymmetrical zipper and the jacket kind of closes a little like that. Um, and it's got zipper pockets all over it. It's got two vertical ones in the front and then two little horizontal ones in the front as well. Um, it's got adjustable straps on each side, two buckles. And then when you flip onto the back side, another cool detail is the kind of like body adjustment uh, strap that hangs off the back. Right now I have it very loose just because I want the jacket to be more loose, which then creates like this cool dangling effect. Um, the actual body of the jacket is quite cropped. You can see how short it is compared to the sleeves, which are kind of elongated. I believe this is a size 48, which equates to like a US medium. And one of my favorite details about this piece is the color. I believe originally this one was navy, but as it fades over time, it kind of becomes more purple. Um, like the sun fading process has been so beautiful on these. I'll see if I can include some other photos of other navy versions of this jacket. Um, I believe there is a black version and there might be a leather version from the Consume Collection. If there are any RAF heads, uh, let me know down below in the comments. But yeah, all time grail piece for me. Um, it's so, so nice and yeah, it fits perfectly into my wardrobe. Yeah, let's move on to the next pickup. The last two items I'm gonna run through pretty quickly since there's nothing particularly special about them, but I did wanna show them to you guys regardless. Um, and they are both related to one of my Halloween costumes this year. So bonus points if you can figure out what it is. Um, this first piece is a huge, and I mean huge, MA1 bomber, um, which I believe is vintage, but I don't think it's authentic, like used in the military. Um, I, it is an old jacket though. It just has like no wear to it. But yeah, I got it in this nice olive, like the traditional olive colorway with the orange lining. Um, and yeah, it was just mainly after the fit. I feel like the fit was the hardest thing to come across when it, can't, when it comes to um, like bombers because usually they're really cropped, but I opted for a double XL one for the fit that I'm going for with the Halloween costume. Um, and yeah, it just absolutely swallows me. It's super cozy. Um, and I'll probably be on the hunt for like a authentic one pretty soon. Um, this one was dirt cheap though. Um, so I'm happy to just like give it a short life and then give it to somebody else. And then moving on to the next item, this is sort of an unlikely favorite for me. Um, I'm always on the hunt for a good backpack, but I was not expecting to like this backpack as much as I do. And it is a mole backpack, like a US Army mole backpack. Um, that I got off a Milserp uh, website. And yeah, it's such a nice backpack. They're so well made. Um, the material is great, the construction is great. Um, the number of details and things you can do with this backpack are kind of mind blowing. Mole is like another word for modular, um, which means that it will traditionally have like these little pull tabs, these little straps everywhere. Um, with like tons of Velcro and you can kind of add on to the bag depending on what you need. So you can add on little pouches, you can add on uh, things for magazines. And yeah, this is something I'm actually really looking forward to using. Um, I love the color on it too and I'm glad that it's not black. I feel like if I was choosing a backpack like this, it probably would have been a black one. Just a cool little backpack that's semi-affordable. Um, and yeah, and that's it for the pickups. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Peace out, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.